Wayne with Lone Wolf Hot Rods. Decades ago when we had pressure plates with ratings that would exceed 3,400 pounds of static pressure, everything would bend. And I think if, if you dig around today, you might even be able to find a, a pressure plate with that kind of static rating. Once the linkage bent, and quite often the firewall would bend with it, and the grabbing the next gear would be virtually impossible. Fair enough, but that was then. Today we have all sorts of multiple disc clutches with low static pressures. But there's still a, a, a pretty big issue with clutch linkages, and I'm going to get into that right now. If you examine the mechanical clutch linkage in many cars, you'll soon discover that the linkage rods, just like this, are well worn at the pin ends, right over here. And most of the mounting holes in the Z-bar, in here, here, and in, in the clutch pedal themselves, will be oval. The reason is many of these cars are old and well used. The clutch linkages are well, basically, they're beyond their best before date. Now what? You can replace the parts. No secret to anyone, we're sure. Most reproduction parts houses offer a wide array of replacement hardware, just like some of this. There are bits and pieces out there to replace Z-bars and linkage parts for plenty of different cars. But throwing parts at the problem isn't exactly the ultimate solution. Some of these reproductions don't exactly have paramount build quality. If you want a slick action clutch linkage, a better option is to build a heavy-duty linkage setup such as this that incorporates rod ends. Old news? No secret. Plenty wrote about this stuff decades ago, me included. But a bunch of important details seem to have gone missing in the translation. Such as, for example, the pinholes, that's where this bolt passes through, in a typical GM clutch linkage, measure 5 16 inch in diameter. Given some time, that whole diameter becomes oval. Building a clutch linkage with 5 16 inch rod ends won't help much because the holes the bolts pass through in the pedal as well as the Z-bar will be sloppy. You're pretty much forced to move up a size in rod ends. That means you should use a 3 8 inch diameter rod end, not a 5 16 inch job. Drilling out the respective holes in the Z-bar or a clutch pedal to 3 8 inch will take out the ovaling. Besides, a 3 8 inch rod end fits the same diameter tubing you'd use for a 5 16 inch rod end. Just the tubing adapters are different. When drilling, keep in mind that the Z-bar and the pedal are hardened, so it'll take some time with a sharp drill bit. So what rod end should you use? Straight up, I'll tell you there's some differences in rod ends. Big differences. Many are made in China. Some are cheaply built by injecting plastic between the rod end ball and the rod end. Now this is a, a larger diameter job, I'm just using it as an example. Some are built, uh, are aircraft quality and they make use of three-piece construction. This configuration is regularly referred to as an aircraft rod end. I use made in the USA Aurora rod ends exclusively and I prefer aircraft rod ends. Here, the race is formed around the ball. Next, the racer insert is staked to, into the rod end body. How important is this? Very. With this layout, the result is a much closer component fit. There's much more precision between the ball and the race. The three-piece design allows specific materials to be included while the rod end is manufactured. For our purposes, a rod end with an alloy body along with an alloy race are at the very top of the heap. The Teflon option shown in this Aurora rod is, is important because the liner allows the rod end to self-lubricate. The use of tef Teflon, a, a trade name of DuPont, uh, eliminates most if not all of the issues associated with grit and premature wear. Teflon liners are made, made up with a carrier component, most often a fabric, that provides compressive strength. A Teflon component providing lubricity as well as a collection of bonding resins. The Teflon liner and the race are bonded together. Because of this, the ball actually rides on the liner. As the ball moves, Teflon is rubbed on it. That's where the lubrication comes from. Two or three piece rod ends commonly available with Teflon liners. When talking Teflon, a high quality composite Teflon liner where components are added to the Teflon mix in order to increase strength will have a compressive strength of somewhere between 40,000 and 60,000 PSI. 
a rod end with a high quality Teflon liner will have a tighter fit. That's because a good Teflon liner eliminates clearance between the ball and the race. Yes, there are certain rod ends available that are built with internal grease fittings, such as this example from Aurora. The catch here is the grease fitting will physically weaken the rod end. One concern is the problem of dirt being attracted to the grease. Grit eventually finds its way in between the ball and the race and then wear escalates, sometimes rapidly. But in the case of a clutch linkage, much of it is, is relatively well hidden or protected in the car. And as, as a result, you can probably get away with a Zerk style rod end, such as this. They're certainly much more economical than the three-piece Teflon job with chrome moly components. I'm not quite done with rod ends. If you go to all the trouble to fab a linkage, which is also used to adjust the clutch, then why not make it easy to work on? If the linkage has all right-hand threads, then you have to go through the, the trouble of removing the bolts and holding the rod ends in place, turning the linkage in and out, and buttoning it back up, and checking the gap. If you're wrong, you have to start all over again. That's way too much trouble. The solution is to use left and right hand thread rod ends on each side of the respective linkage pieces instead of, of using all standard right hand rod ends. You obviously may need left and right hand tubing adapters with this setup, and, and you also need the appropriate jam nuts. Here. With this setup, to adjust the clutch, you simply have to back off the jam nuts on, on the rod ends and turn the linkage rod one way or the other to loosen or lengthen the respective link. When it comes to the tubing used to form the linkage, there are two really good options. For longer pieces of linkage from the clutch uh, pedal to the Z-bar, I use a swedge and aluminum tubing section. You can get this in various lengths, usually in one inch increments with a three inch left and right hand uh, thread on each end. It's often, often used on, on mini sprints as a link. As you can see here, the tubing is knurled. This allows you to adjust it by hand once the jam nuts are loosened. And by the way, I also obtained my left and right hand jam nuts from Aurora Bearing. The other option is to fabricate your linkage yourself from chromoly tubing. I prefer this for the short link that runs from the clutch fork to the Z-bar. To build it, I cut a piece of 5 8 inch 58 thou wall chromoly tubing to size. I simply used a, a hacksaw to make the cut. If you place a hose clamp over the cut area, you could use it as a guide to keep the cut straight. Then I use a fine, fine tooth file, round file to deburr de de the ID of the tubing. I also sand down the OD and lightly chamfer the end to allow for welding. And here. Next, a set of welding spuds or tubing adapters are pressed into place. One side has left hand threads, and the other side has right hand threads. Finally, I lightly grind the ID of a 5 8 inch jam nut right here so it fits over the OD of this, the center of the tube. Once welded, this allows me to use a 1 inch open end wrench to adjust the clutch under the car. Speaking of welding, once everything was finished uh, and fit together for this piece, it was nicely TIG welded by, by pals at Fisher Fab. Once complete, the 3 8 inch rod ends from Aurora are installed. I always use a light coating of anti-seize compound on rod end threads. As mentioned previously, the jam nuts are also from Aurora Bearing. Cars like 55, 6, 7 Chevys and many early Corvettes used a roll pin right in there on the clutch fork end. This is a C3 Corvette fork. You can get it from Summit Racing. It's a simple matter to enlarge the slot right there on the end to increase the hole size for a bolt. This allows the rod end to fit within the fork. Many cars with mechanical linkage make use of a pointed or semi-ball end at the clutch fork side. A good example is this first generation Camaro fork. A clutch return spring keeps it from falling apart, but you'll still have to fabricate a ball end right there to seat in the fork. Here's how you can make it. Cut the head off of a 3 8 inch fine thread bolt, common right hand thread application, and then grind it and grind it to a shape that, that matches the fork. If you don't have a lathe, no problem. Chuck the, the bolt into an electric drill motor. This allows you to turn the piece on, on both a stone as well as a piece of coarse sandpaper to get, the, get a nice radius. Fits in like that. 
When done, chase the threads with a 3 8 inch fine thread die. You can see how the modified bolt fits into the clutch uh, fork right here. As you can see, I used a short, sec short section of swage tubing along with a jam nut on the end. The ball end bolt screws right into the, into the uh, swage tubing. This is what the linkage looks like assembled in the Z-Bar. Uh, it's both types of linkage, one for the Corvette style of fork and this one for the Camaro fork. It's easy to adjust and it's easy for you to build at home. For more down-to-earth tech that you can use, please subscribe to Lone Wolf's Hot Rod channel and please share. Thanks for watching.